that just as you don't know how you manage to be conscious, how you manage to grow and shape this body of yours, that doesn't mean to say that you're not doing it. Equally, you don't know how the universe shines the stars, constellates the constellation, and galactifies the galaxies. You don't know. But that doesn't mean to say that you aren't doing it in just the same way as you're breathing without knowing how you breathe. So, uh, because we seem to be disconnected and entirely sealed within our skin, that is a very deceptive thing because the skin is not really the boundary of man. This incredible miracle of existence, and it is a miracle, that infinite number of things that had to happen for me to be here talking to you and you to be there listening were able to happen in just the right way. We are but tiny specks in a tiny speck in the galaxy, which is a tiny speck in the universe. Like ants on an anthill, building their cities, living their lives, doing what is important to them at the moment without falling for the trick that they are the center of the universe. And our lives, no more important than ants, and no less important than anyone else's, is quite simply a miracle. We all come from source, we will all return from source. And if we can remember the impermanent nature, if we can, almost like a mantra, as often as possible, whenever we are anywhere, we remember the impermanent nature of everything. And each time we do, we program our subconscious a little more and a little more. And this doesn't bring panic or fear or worry or stress like many people might think. Quite the opposite. It brings us gratitude. And we treat people with the love and respect they deserve and never take them for granted. From my experience, the universe is really our guide. We can sometimes feel like lives are chaotic, random, out of control. And at other times, we can feel in complete control, manifestors, creators of our destiny. But the universe is really always in control. <laughs> and the universe guides us to what we need, when we need it, where we need it. And the more open we are to new opportunities or changes in plans and not so rigid and stuck to our small perspective of how things should be, the more flexible we become, the more we flow without resistance to whatever situation comes into our lives and new doors open up to us that we never even dreamt of. So it's important to always allow the universe to teach us, to guide us, and to remember when we think something isn't going our way, that maybe something better is coming. But what worries us is that 
when we are dead, there could be nothing at all forever, as if that was something to worry about. Before you were born there was this same nothing at all forever, and yet you happened. And if you happen once, you can happen again. So, I reason that if I go back when I'm dead to the state where I was before I was born, couldn't I happen again? You know, what has happened once can very well happen again. If it happened once, it's extraordinary. And it's not really very much more extraordinary if it happened all over again. We do not know how it is done, just as we do not know, really, how musical, artistic and literary genius is done. You cannot really teach it. You can put the tools for doing these things into people's hands and you can show them how to use the tools. But whether they will use those tools with genius is quite unpredictable. Uh, to show you how crazy I am, I have a, uh, a friend who some of you have met through books, uh, a friend named Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a spook, a being that has dropped his body somewhere along the way and speaks through a w lovely woman named Pat Rodigas. But Emmanuel has a lot of nachas. He has a lot of real wisdom and he's a great, he's like an uncle to me. He's just wonderful fun. And when I said to Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I deal a lot with uh, the fear of dying in this culture and death. What should I tell people? And he said, Ramdas, tell them that death is absolutely safe. Death is absolutely safe. And then he added one more image. He said, it's like taking off a tight shoe. Okay, can you hear that one? Like taking off a tight shoe. Now just imagine that you as spirit or awareness have contained yourself in an incarnation or contained it in a conceptual model of who you are and on a storyline and then at some point you dissolve out of that, you break out of that and there is this incredible release quality. The more you are aware of the spiritual nature of life, the more you see the moment of death as a moment for release for taking off the tight shoe and the art form in dying is that at the moment of death you are neither grabbing at life nor pushing it away you realize that they're living through you and that everybody you've ever loved is part of the fabric of your being now in the way in which you go forward and that's where grief gets transformed into a living love space, a spiritual transcendence of the pain. Death does not have to be treated as an enemy for you to delight in life. Keeping death present in your consciousness as one of the greatest mysteries and as the moment of incredible transformation imbues this moment with added richness an energy that otherwise is used up in denial. I encourage you to make peace with death, to see it as the culminating adventure of this adventure called life. It is not an error, it is not a failure, it is taking off a tight shoe which you have worn well but those that find the way in the morning can gladly die in the evening, it is said in the mystical literature. The way that is understood in the morning, one can gladly die in the evening. <laughs>